This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. All good things must come to an end. And so it's the case with our Sovereign Nations Changing Tide series, where I'm in conversation with Dr. James Lindsay and Dr. Stephen Hicks. And today we'll mark our last episode of the Changing Tide series that will be released later this afternoon, with James Lindsay addressing the science of Hegel. And when we say science, we're not referring to the science that you were introduced to in high school or junior high. You know, the science that is after objective truth. The science that is going through the process of falsification and the scientific method in order to arrive at an objective conclusion. Instead, we will be looking at G.F.W. Hegel's alchemic model of scientific Gnosticism and Hegel's avoidance of objective observation that instead is focused upon subjective Pygmalianism, creating your truth or objectives along the way, arriving at your predetermined idea of operational success. Maybe you've heard that quite a bit from me over the past four years. I hope you will take time to listen to our conversation when it's released later today. Well, I also want to make sure that you've taken time to listen to the entire Changing Tides series of conversations that Dr. Lindsay and I have had. And these were all recorded earlier this year, between February and May. So understand, when we're having these conversations with Dr. Lindsay and then later with Dr. Hicks, we're also trying to forecast ahead for you to explain what's coming your way. For example, in our first discussion, our first video in our Changing Tide series, Dr. Lindsay and I discuss climate justice. And please understand, once again, this conversation was recorded back in February of this year, just after Joe Biden's inauguration. Both James Lindsay and I knew that climate justice was going to be the big, all-encompassing, huge, everything must change and it must change now kind of demand that will be used to usher in an equitable, intersectional revenue distribution model in the United States and then used throughout the world. And now, in this past week, Adam Schiff is pushing legislation for climate justice in Congress. In our second discussion that we had, Dr. Lindsay and I went over the year and a half since our discussions that we had back in 2019 in New York City. You know, the discussions from the Trojan Horse series, the discussions that helped us to break through and explain exactly what was going on with critical race theory, intersectionality, and radical subjectivism. In that conversation, a critical reset, we explain how all the ideological nonsense is meant for a political end, and now it is coming full on for all of us as an attempt to reset our world. We explain how we try to warn about this in 2019. As a matter of fact, I've been trying to warn people about it since 2017, but we'll get into that later. Well, in the end, James and I explained that it isn't enough to just write books and record podcasts. It's time for polemic, clear, fearless, intellectual confrontation. We just can't simply talk about the problem. We have to do something about it. We also have to start naming the names. And believe me, I have paid a huge political cost for naming the names. And then in our third conversation in the Changing Tides video series, we discuss Hegel. And Dr. Lindsay explains how the methodology of today's ideological frameworks are sourced in Hegel and the dialectical model, and in a sense, more of a metaphysical manifestation of what Karl Marx demythologized years later. So while Marx tried to remove the explicit idealist metaphysics laid down by Hegel in his dialectic by fusing it dialectically with materialism, the alchemic roots of negative thinking could not, in fact, be removed. What Karl Marx would later call 
critical philosophy is retained in that rational kernel, nearly all of the alchemical metaphysics of Hegelian philosophy, the creation of the positive through the application of the negative. And so this line of negative thinking has evolved through Marxism into neo-Marxism and as well into postmodernism, and at last, into the woke ideologies of today, which dialectically synthesize these later developments in philosophy. We talk through all of this, and I believe you will find that conversation edifying if you haven't heard it. In our fourth conversation in the Changing Tides video series, Dr. Lindsay and I spoke through the classic passive, aggressive propaganda known as the Mott and Bailey. And maybe you've heard me refer to that in these podcasts that we've been doing for public occurrences, but I've addressed those as well in The Causes of Things. But let's go back to the Mott and Bailey. And the Mott and Bailey is one of the central tools of the critical social justice or the woke movement. And in that strategy, named after a kind of castle, a highly defensible Mott position like, let's say, if you say, quote, we need to just treat people more fairly, is maintained while also pushing a more radical Bailey position like, quote, We need to radically remake our school systems so that no one can fail, end quote. So activists advance the Bailey, and then when they're pressed on it, they retreat to the Mott until scrutiny and pressure go away, at which point then they return back to the Bailey, and then they go hard again. And you've heard me refer to this technique before, and it's used by politicians like folks like Joe Biden or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Maybe you've heard of this technique from Christian leaders like Al Mohler or Danny Aiken. It is the same strategy. Well, in our fifth discussion on the Changing Tides video series, I was joined back at the beach by Dr. Lindsay, and with us as well is most likely one of the most formidable historical philosophers of our time, Dr. Stephen Hicks, a man who has had a tremendous impact in my thinking over the past four years. So together, we trace back to the origins of the really bad ideas that are controlling our current culture, our politics, our education, and even our religions today. And when you listen to the moral language and rhetoric of our culture today, you less often hear appeals to personal responsibility and rugged individualism. And more often, we see that some of the claims that came back from folks like Rousseau, like claims of privileges, disparities, and oppression— These are the things that are being discussed. This set of ideas, once foreign to American ears, is now popular with those promising equity and the utopia. Individualism, for instance, has been accused of being part of the white or patriarchal system, while top-down collectivist solutions are demanded along with a new social contract. And this, you hear, echoes from Rousseau. And in nearly every case, an idealized concept of collective justice is embedded in the proposed utopia, along with a rejection of the meritocratic system that has successfully created exponential growth in our civilization. Well, we understand that the American way is to be discarded by these folks into the ash heap of history because it must be dismantled. It must be disrupted. So to understand the genesis of this conflict, you need to know about Geneva's Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And this is essential because Rousseau's anti-enlightenment ideology was really the ideological inspiration of the Jacobin dictators of the French Revolution. So while the American Revolution really valued individual liberty and natural rights, the French Revolution demanded equality and the collective rights of man. And we continue that discussion from Rousseau to Kant to Hegel And then we end on who Dr. Hicks refers to as the third-rate philosopher, Karl Marx. Well, in our sixth discussion, which we just released this past week, Dr. Hicks and Dr. Lindsay continue to discuss the history of awful ideas from Marx through Kierkegaard to the Fabians through Gramsci, the Frankfurt School, Maoism, and we finally end at the doorstep of postmodernism. So now, arriving at our last conversation in the video series that will be released today, Dr. Lindsay and I close out the series discussing the science, really what should be referred to as the alchemy, the Gnosticism 
of Hegel. And in doing so, hope that you understand why when someone says, quote, I trust the science or, quote, I believe in science, end quote, that you should know that they are most likely referring to Hegel's alchemic methodologies that end in his Pygmalion desires. So if you weren't aware of this series ending today, I hope you will make yourself aware today. We have over a half a million downloads of the Changing Tides series in both audio and video formats in all of our different locations on the web. Now, please note, when you're enjoying these series, whether it be from our Trojan Horse series, from our conferences that we had starting in 2017, um, even through the next series that you'll be hearing from very soon, that all of these come at a personal cost. So take note, as someone had stated in our comment section on this last video with Dr. Hicks and Dr. Lindsay, where they stated, quote, I can't believe that all of this incredible content is free, end quote. And I appreciate that comment because it is free for you, absolutely. But we do have to pay bills to bring this incredible content to you. Now, you won't hear me press you a lot for things like this, but if you do understand and appreciate the content, which I hope to bring a lot more of in the coming months, I just ask if you consider supporting us at Sovereign Nations through Patreon or PayPal, because we must increase the content now. We have to. And with that is that we must hire more people. And I must become more focused on cranking out as much as I possibly can with the team that we currently have, but expanding that team so we can do more. Daily podcasts, of course, with public occurrences, both foreign and domestic, something that we're doing on a daily basis. Bi-weekly, longer form podcasts with the causes of things will be cranked up. Our conferences and our workshops we're going to be starting to have again all over the nation. And our in-depth video conversations that have changed the entire course of the ideological conversation and response to this current ideological pandemic. And so our next video series, coming out in two weeks, will again change the entire conversation once again. And once again, I'm concerned about making all of our content beautiful. We want to increase production, and we will, with your help, because we must win. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic.